everyone, Nick from Hawk Pro Detailing, and today I have a special guest. The hopper himself. The hopper himself. <laughs> the most interesting man in detailing. I'm going to call you that. A bold statement. Jack. Bold statement. Kavanaugh. Jack Kavanaugh, or Cav, or God, or handsome. Anything works. Anything's good with me. Who are you? I, I'm just this overweight man that lives above London, that makes stupid videos about cleaning cars. Hopefully, trying to sell a little bit of product, and having a good time while I'm doing it. I've never seen anybody like you, bro. Like, I've seen your videos, and I'm like, he does the kick. <laughs> if you haven't seen the kick, where can they find you on social real quick if they don't know you? Stjana Gloss, spelt S-T-J-A-R-N-A -A Gloss. Why do we call it Stjana Gloss? Because it means star gloss in Sweden. My interpretation of that is the glow around a star, which is what we want all of our cars to do Aww. on the assumption that they're gloss. Because Matt, it doesn't really work. But most cars, it works, okay? Your brand is fascinating, and I want to get into that in a second, but mostly I'm like, who are you? Like, how did you get in the detailing space? How did you get involved with Stjarna Gloss? I've seen the rag company carries you guys, so I know you're making a name for yourself. I guess people watching might know you, they might not, but I just genuinely had somebody send me your video, and I was like, who is this guy? What is, like, it just, you're very charismatic, you're very likable. Um, I'd be curious to, like, hear a little bit about your story. So. Been in sales all my life. I also did acting and dancing, drama from the age of three. Did that right up until I was 18. I loved it, of course, but needed to provide, needed to put some money on the table. And unfortunately, that's quite a loose way to earn money. You can earn obscene amounts of money, but you can also earn no money. So I went into sales, which was a very natural progression. And everybody at school said to me that you'll always you'll be a second-hand car salesman, which now I don't see as a negative, but at the time it felt a little bit derogatory. Um, so really fought against it. Did not want to sell cars, especially second-hand ones, but loved cars. Landed at a detailing company, not this one, and fell in love. I was close to cars, wasn't selling them, still being able to use sales. Could be a bit of a performer. Left there for different reasons and looked for a job with anybody that would have me. How old? This was, so I probably got into detailing around 24, 25. Had done it from the age of 17 when I got my first car, but just didn't really know what I was doing, using the products in the complete wrong way, but knew that I just wanted to make the car shinier. No, it was real, real basic, but I had an interest. I'd be out there a little bit too long on a Saturday. As I say, getting it wrong, but there was definitely an enthusiasm or a passion about it, making the car more presentable. Um, so yeah, got the job, left there for other reasons, went to literally any manufacturer that would give me an interview. Nothing. Nobody wanted to take me on. So you wanted a corporate job or you wanted to detail at a, at a dealership? What do you mean by manufacturer? So I didn't really want to do, I didn't really want to be on the tools because I like talking to people. I love being around people. And I think that's the, the hardest part about detailing is it can be very isolated. Earphones on, 10 hours. You could easily not talk to somebody for that, that amount of time. So I wanted it to be more customer facing. As I say, went to... I'm not going to name any names actually, but a lot of manufacturers of detailing products that are in this room, just no traction, just couldn't get anywhere. Met Dodo Juice, who's the parent company of Shana Gloss, been around for 15, 16 years, legends, make a great chemical, and they wanted to create a new lifestyle brand that was young, innovative, exciting, modified car, heavy, that was our, that was our core demographic, and wanted a front man, fantastic. I didn't really realize what the journey was going to take me on. I thought I was just going to be more of a salesman. And the job was, we, so John got turned three on the 1st of November, a couple of days ago. What's fascinating was... Happy birthday. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. Um, what was crazy as a journey is that it was kind of make beautiful content, photography mainly. And then when we went into lockdown, we were six months old. And I'll be honest, I thought, game over. Really? I didn't, I didn't realize that people would go out and clean their car. When we got told by our Prime Minister to go home, we thought people would go home, not go outside and clean the car. So completely misread that, got very lucky. Anybody, any detailing manufacturer that says they crushed it during COVID is arrogant. Everybody did very well through COVID. Yes. Because if you had shampoo in a bottle, whether it was good or not, it was gonna sell. So I'm very, we're very, very lucky to have that. But the second part was, I was at home, scrolling through Instagram, 
nobody was making content. So I went to the unit, made a video full of nerves on how to use a snow foam lance. And it, I, at the time we had like 2,000 followers and it got 4,000 views and I was like, that's not right. Went back the next week, made another video about snow foam lance and it got more views. And as with more views, became more confidence. And now really, I'm not even a salesman, I'm just a marketer that makes stupid videos. But I can be arrogant, I can be a little bit nonchalant because the chemical backs itself up. I'm not trying to sell rubbish, which there is plenty of in the industry. It's a good product that I, f I love when somebody goes, oh, I'm gonna buy that because he's quite entertaining. Get it, and they go, oh my God, it works as well. So you feel the integrity of it. Like you can be you, you can have fun, and you know your stuff works. Exactly. You're not like... I'm not hiding. It would be a weird thing to put all this out there, you know, uh, your personality, all this fun, and, and, and do the detailed videos, but no deep down, like this stuff sucks, but like, I'm gonna sell some product, right? Like that would be a weird way to live, wouldn't it? And there's too many people that do that. I'm not, really? again, I'm not saying any, oh, there are way too many, especially, mm, actually no, I'm not gonna generalize. There are big players that make outrageous claims for traction, for, 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 for clout, no, they can't back it up, but unfortunately, this industry, our customers, I just worry that they sometimes can be lied to, and there's no repercussions. There are no, mm. If I said to you, oh, this ceramic curtain will hold on for 50 years. Oh my gosh. And it doesn't, what are you gonna do? You'll be dead. Nothing. 50 years, exactly. the you're not gonna have dead. the car. You'll be dead, the car will exactly. be dead, yeah. With a three year, with the average of two to three year cycle of cars, you can say what you want. And there's no, uh, that's why I really like the, fault, the thought of the IDA, or at home we have um, uh, Pro Detail and Avalitas Association. There being some sort of a governing body to remove the chance of these outlandish claims that, as I say, there's just no repercussion. Imagine, imagine you as a builder, and you said, oh, I can build you a house for 300,000 pound that will have 10 bedrooms in it, uh, and we're gonna make it out of straw. No, you can't. But you can say that in detailing. Nobody's gonna pull you up on it. Oh, they will pull you up on it, but 1% of the people that don't believe you is completely overcast by the 99% of people that are like, oh my God, I want that. Yeah. No, but that's me being, that's the, the, that's the, the negative of the industry. That's why I am so cocky, and I know I'm cocky, I know I'm arrogant, but it's because I know that what I'm saying, the product backs it. So that's a very nice place to be. So tell me this, where did the little, <laughs> where did this come from? So do you remember a boxer called Prince Nassim? No. Okay, fair enough. So British boxer from Birmingham, um, we used to wear these disgraceful leopard print shorts. Okay. And he would do the goose step. As he was walking towards his opponent, he would just do this little shuffle. What, what, what is this? It's, I don't even know. I don't even know what you I'm doing. You don't know how to teach You sort of kick forward, the other leg flick, sw switches over. One more time. <laughs> that is just... And then, so you would watch him do that. Honestly, the, his opposing, the, the person he was fighting just, it threw them off for a second. <laughs> and it, I just latched onto it, did it one day in a video, trying to sort of pep myself up, and watched it back and I was like, oh, that's quite funny, I'll leave it in. And the comment section was wild. What is that, what is that? You... Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, there's loads of little, little things now, like shorts, I never wear trousers. I don't really like the feeling of um, trousers on my legs, plus I'm overweight, I don't feel the cold. Everyone, oh my God, you're not wearing shorts. These little things, this is marketing 101, these little things are what hook people in as long as they're listening, it doesn't matter why they're listening, I just need you listening. That's it. I'm just, I'm listening. <laughs> that's what I'm trying to do, more listening, less talking. So, if you've never tried Sierra Gloss, what is the product that's gonna hook them? You know, you just, this is the, like, bro, I, I, I'm like an enthusiast. Give me something that's fire that I will, I will love. Guaranteed. Number one, forced our citrus pre-wash. Our best-selling product by a long, long way. How do you say it? Forced. So, one quick thing. All of our names are Swedish. Okay. They, they translate into a relevant word in English. So, forced means first, because it's the first thing you would use on the bodywork. Huel is our wheel cleaner. Huel means wheel. So, just, I get that's a little bit confusing. Forced citrus pre-wash strips through grime like nothing else you've ever seen. It is a beast. You, I hate the idea of contactless cleans. 
that's as close as you'll get to a very mucky car that is as close as you will get to not needing to do a contact wash on the car. Second, my personal favourite, Parlour, which means gem, because that's how we want our cars to look. Water-based spray sealant, spray it on, wipe it, um, work it in with one cloth, buff it off with another, that will latch on for five months and it's water-based. So you have got nothing to worry about using it on old paints, your skin, it can go on glass, rubber, plastics, hard materials such as leather and vinyl. It offers UV protection. Like, I know this, that's the product that sounds, no, nah, it can't do all that. It does. It doesn't last five months on leather because obviously leather moves. Love Parlour. It is very anti, I'm not anti-ceramic coatings at all. I'm very against ceramic infused, ceramic toppers. This air freshener is ceramic. No, it's not. You're putting that word on to hook people in. And I get it, marketing, but it's a lie. Parlour is as good as the ceramic infused products. It's a fraction of the price. Um, it's 14 pound at home for 500 mil, and that will do four or five cars. A lot of protection, two years worth of protection for 14 pound, and anyone can use it. And then finally, gummy, which means rubber, tire and trim dressing. So it'll dress your tires and do trim? Yeah, because okay. they're very, very similar. And another thing, Chandler's is all about simplicity. I will not have two products that overlap because- You say it's about simplicity, but I don't know what these words are, bro. That's the thing. True. Like, I enough. don't know. Fair enough. Fair enough. It's like you're in England and it's like Swedish, but it's meant to be an English yeah. word. Like, come on, help me out. No, that's fair. You're that's telling fair. me the exact opposite. We're about simplicity and I'm trying to <laughs> understand. No, you're right. Okay. I'm slow the, the range is simplistic. Okay. The, the reason for the name, the reason for the look, the aesthetic, the feel, English car care brands, done to death. German car care brands, done to death. American style car care brands, done to death. We're not doing that. So from an aesthetic point of view, my house looks like Ikea. I know most women love that Scandi look, clean, simplistic, white, light, bright colors. So we was like, nobody's really doing that in car care. Yeah. So that's why we kind of latched onto the Swedish thing. The name, Stjarnagos was, was a brand about 16, 17 years ago in the north of the country in Manchester. I don't know why they called it Stjarnagos, I, I, I have to be honest. And then they failed, unfortunately. I don't, we, we, we don't know why, it just didn't stick. So rather than, when me, myself and Dodo Juice wanted to bring this brand to life, rather than starting from nothing, like a, an arrogant Jack's car care or Jack's wax, um, <laughs> we, we thought, let's, let's have a name, let's have a Nike or a Porsche, something that we can make our own. So we bought the rights from them and then kind of made it our own thing. Granted, our initial idea was to make it very Swedish focused, so Vol Volvo, Saab, yeah. Koenigsegg. Unfortunately, they don't have much of a following in modified car world. So we've kind of migrated over to the BMWs and the German stuff. Um, but yeah, I, would, I agree in that it's not a simple, oh, I'll just buy that. You have, to get, you have to know it, you have to love it, you have to want it. But once you're in, you realize, oh wow, this the citrus pre-wash works as a tire cleaner, engine degreaser, anything that really needs heavy hitting cleaning, that does that really, really well. We have two shampoos at the moment, I want to simplify that down to one. Um, I just want, I want the brand to be, oh, I want it to be trusted and fun. I feel like a lot of brands can be, you know you can rely on this brand, cool, but they're normally a little bit lacking in personality. We just want fun, man. Exactly. Detailing is fun. Exactly. It's so much fun. And I feel that there, there are lots of brands that have tons of personality, very, very fun, but the product doesn't back it. Yep, 100%. So that's what DIY Detail wants to be as well, fun. Yeah, fun, exactly. Yeah, cool. so that is, uh, I am Hawk Pro, and I kind of have said I will not talk about DIY detail okay, on this channel, sure. but since you've been so candid and honest with me, which I really appreciate, like all these details, it could be easy to wanna put some walls up, right? And you've got the image, and you're just telling me the truth, but uh, not to say people don't tell the truth, but we're in an industry trade show, right? And it just seems like everyone's in their silo, we're all coming together, which is awesome, but yeah, people have livelihoods at stake and there's yeah. just, there's different things. And so, but yeah, DIY Detail is an enthusiast car care brand that Ivan LaCroix and I started. And yeah, I'm, I'm picking your brain about it too. It's like, we want it to be fun. We want it to be simple. Um, 
and, and the, ultimately the products have to be good and they are, right? But like you're with the rag company and I've seen you on Instagram and so you're doing the thing, which I think is awesome. Um, what has surprised you along this journey? How marketing is the most important thing in business. Good products aren't enough. They're not. They are essential, but they're not enough. Apple is a prime example of that. I'm sure every Android user will tell you how their phone is better than an iPhone. iPhones sell it the best, that's why they win. And it's amazing how, um, it's amazing how good people can be, but it's quite scary how horrible people can be as well. At marketing? No, I mean, as towards you, if oh, you're doing humans. quite well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh... The, the detail industry, I think, is very uplifting and so toxic at the same time. Um, what else has surprised me? Why? Why what? Why is it like that? Jealousy. Mm. Nobody wants to see somebody doing something that they can't. Well, I was going to say, where does that jealousy come from, you think? So I... Uh, the reason I don't like, care. why are people jealous, right? Not like, did it come from John over in Manchester? Like, where does it come from in the detailers themselves? I think it's, I can't do what he is. I'm not going to swear, but you. I, I think I, I, I don't. Obviously, jealousy is a, a really toxic trait. I'm jealous of people. I, I like to say I'm more envious. I don't want you not to have it. I want to have it as well. Oh, I like that. So you a, you could want it as well. Yeah. And, and not wish ill will on thing. them, and exactly. just be like, I wish that I had that. I wish I could be that. I'm I'm something of that. Is that jealous or envy? I think so. Uh, it, to the best of my knowledge, envy is I want that too. Jealousy is I don't want you to have that. Okay, so you, so envious though sounds kind of evil and sinister. You it's can be envious bad. of someone's success, not wish them ill will, just be like, I wish I had that too. Yeah. I wish that was me. Okay, yeah. okay. I think like the, 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 there's a few Rolls Royce Cullinans here. I don't see them as a, oh, you don't deserve that. I need to work harder to get that. Yeah. That's my envy. That's my interpretation of envy. Um, that, I think, unfortunately, I think people will become very jealous if they can't, and I, again, I don't mean to sound arrogant, but if they can't get on camera, perform, entertain, oh, oh, he, oh, he didn't deserve it. Well, why don't you go out there and try and do it? Yeah. Because if you did, your customers might be a little bit more engaged with you and you'd sell more products. I think that's, uh, I'm, I, I like to consider, there are plenty of detailers that put a face to their brand, but, very YouTube focused. I don't think there are enough short format TikTok and Instagram, and that's what I want to crush. I'm not going to try and go up against the Larriers of M O M Y C. He's a beast, huge respect for him. Beast, beast, legend, legend. Yeah, I'm not going to try and beat him. So I'm going to. Go Larry won't even talk to me. I tried to do an interview with him. Really? And he blew me off, Larry. I'm calling you out, bro. Larry, Sorry, not to no, throw no, shade, no, 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 but no, no, he's no. A, he's that big of a deal that yeah. he didn't want to do an interview with me. I, and I was like, that is very strange. Like, I just, I was like, I did, uh, you're the only person who said no to me. Like, you, I guess, are a big deal, you know? It's very interesting. So thank you for your... bigger. If he, if yeah. he obviously, you're, he, you've got some, some subscribers that might not have heard of him. Yeah. I think that's quite, that's a little bit arrogant. And the one... Th as I say, this is not shade in the slightest. If anything, it's praise. So I did a series with, I did two series with Top Gear called Clean Team, where we did like disaster details, yeah, a yeah. car that would just yeah. be horrific, and then we would transform it, give it back to the owner. And we had a lot of fun. The comment section was wild. Not as good as Larry, not as good as Larry, not as oh good as Larry. Oh my gosh, they I'm said like, that? Okay, I'm not as good as Larry, fine. I mean, nothing's I by care. accident. That dude is successful and yeah. he's built a brand. Like, I admire, I admire. I am not envious or jealous. Like, it, he's past that for me. I'm just like, I, he, the New York Times writes an article about this guy and like, really? my detailing customers are like, yeah, I follow this one guy on Instagram, or YouTube. And I'm like, is it this guy? They're like, yeah, yeah. Like, they just know about this guy. Yeah. So, but uh, man, he's elevated the industry. He has. He has. Along with Pan, a lot of people have got some negative things to say about Pan. Pan is out there, active, crushing it. You see how he responds to every single customer or every single um, comment. A comment. Like, really? Yes, he's a legit good wow. guy. And wow. I didn't know that until recently, right? So. Not, not to say you have sympathy for the very successful people out there, but people have images of, of those out there, and I would just say it's usually not by accident that they're successful. Um, and most of the time, Absolutely. people who are successful in every industry, I think, are good to people. What is it? There's a, an amazing you know? saying that I heard. T um, hard work outweighs talent if talent doesn't work hard. Like them or not, 
they're grafting. If they're constantly showing up on your feed, they must be working extremely hard. And like them or not, you have to respect that. What's the most exciting thing in the detail industry besides Jack coming up <laughs> uh, in 2022? You're at SEMA. We're seeing the things. We're, we're meeting the people. Uh, what's got you excited? The pink F40 over there. Yeah. The Rolls Royce Cullinan's in the next room. I am. You're a car guy. I'm big time. Yeah, big yeah, time. yeah. That comes through for and, sure. And I, I like cars for very different reasons, but I see them as a, as a goal. Next year I want this. The year after I want that. I kind of. That's the way I. Obviously, my wife and my twin boys. I love them dearly. They'll be looked after first, but. You'll know you, you know you're doing well when you're like, I really want that car, I've got that car. Then, and then that's the, that for me really turns me on, that gets me super excited. I'm not a million miles away from having that car that felt like a dream five years ago. So that's a way that you're measuring? Yeah. Growth. Growth. Success. Um, awesome, man. Well, there's so much more to talk about. I was wondering, do you do the thing outro or just intro? No, so it's skip in and then it's normally a dip out. Shall we? Oh, absolutely. Just don't crash. <laughs> All right, you go this way, I'll go that way. Okay, you go first. What was that? <laughs> 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 <laughs>